I'd like to live another 80 years, but that's probably not going to happen. I'm proud of what I did, uh, but life moves on and I'm moving on. You know, hidden across America, there's certain pockets of trout fishing that people just often overlook. Uh, it's a misconception to think that trout fishing is reserved for the Rocky Mountains or the Smoky Mountains. Uh, here in Missouri, we have some of the best trout fishing I've ever experienced. As far as being able to get away from people and experience some big fish uh, in some of the most scenic areas of the country I've ever been in. The reason we're here fishing today is because of the work Spence Turner did. You know, Spence deserves a tip of the cap from every trout fisherman uh, that passes through our state. Somebody said if you got a job, a job you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. And to bite honest, I was there at the right time when I could be autonomous and do things that I knew needed to be done. I was able to accomplish what I set out to accomplish. And that's, that's humbling. Spence is a great example of somebody leaving a legacy through the work they do while they're alive. You know, we, we chase dollars too often in this life. We, we chase prideful achievements. But what Spence did was he bought into exactly what he believed in, what he knew he could do to make Missouri a better place for fishermen. And he worked that for his whole career. And now for generations to come, that resource is gonna exist and we're gonna be able to enjoy trout fishing in Missouri because of the work of one man. We do have I think, I think some of the finest trout fishing anywhere. And I have fished from coast to coast for trout, and, and I don't know anywhere I'd rather be than right here on the current river, trout fishing. Some of the streams in Missouri were stocked back in the late 1800s. In fact, I have a relative, my grandfather, who was responsible for stocking some trout back in the 20s, 1920s, in some of his favorite spring-fed streams. He uh, was a railroad depot agent. And when the, the trains would come by with those cream cans filled with fingerling trout, he'd ask his buddies to drop a few here and there along the way, and others were doing the same. So there are streams here that were stocked in the late 1800s, have never been stocked since, that have nice rainbow trout populations that are what we would consider wild trout. Well, largely what you had before Spence came along was the trout parks. So basically, if you wanted to fly fish for trout, you went to Bennett Spring or Roaring River or Merrimack or here at Montauk, and that was pretty well it. When Spence arrived on the scene, um, there had been some quote unquote trout biologists before him, but they hadn't stayed long and they hadn't made quite as big of a mark as he had. And at that time, trout fishing was totally and completely about raising and stocking hatchery trout. Parks are unique in the fact that they know fish were put in the night before. Even kids are just getting started, can watch them stock the fish and know there's fish in there. So it makes them attractive and you don't have the go a day, you didn't have a strike or didn't catch a fish. You can't say there's no fish in there because they're, they're there. So every day during the trout season, MDC stocks trout into these four uh, rivers based on the number of people that bought tags the previous day. So there's always going to be fresh fish in there to be caught. Now people see pictures of opening day and fishermen are standing shoulder to shoulder and some people say why would you want to do that? Well it's an incredible cultural experience. It's, it's a celebration of fishing that happens each year and you just know what you're getting into. You know that you're going to be shoulder to shoulder with people, but you also know that person's there for the same exact reason you are, and that's because they love fishing, they love trout, they embrace the experience, and, and just make a huge fishing uh, party out of this cultural event that takes place in our state. There's a high intensity of demand on that resource that requires absolutely incredible management to be successful. And, we have the best put-and-take trout fishery in the world, you know, here 
and Spence is the architect of that. Part of my focus during the early years, say from 1969, 1970 on through the mid 80s, was to change the department's focus so they not only had the wonderful trout parks that we manage every year, but there was also a diversity of fishing opportunities for those folks that wanted something by themselves. Uh, most people didn't realize there was even a wild fishery in the state or even where it came from when I started. And uh, once I did the history, which was back in the early 70s, and realized that the potential that we had in the state, I started lobbying pretty hard for some wild trout fishing. And it took a while for the department to see the way. The first one was the uh, Crane Creek, and that was one of the first streams to have reproducing rainbows in 1882. It was stocked in 1880. Spring River was another one down in the same location that had spawning rainbows back in the 1882-83 uh, frame. Um, these fish came from the McLeod River in California, federal egg taking station shipped out by train. There were trout in some of the streams, mostly they were escapees from the hatcheries, but he started doing a lot of uh, thermograph studies and, and trying to determine which streams could hold fish. He also was uh, identifying some of those streams that had wild populations in them and was instrumental in developing plans for those streams that would have habitat put in that would help those, those populations expand and, and become even more viable than they were. Uh, and, and again, just like being here at uh, on the current river below the, the park, for the next seven miles we have a managed trout area that basically didn't exist before that time. So he, he really brought trout fishing in, in a, a wholesale way to the state of Missouri. It's a good one. Uh, when Spence Turner showed up in 1969 and went to work on our trout program, he started rediscovering these remnant populations of wild trout and found where they actually were living and thriving in certain environments. Then he went out and started replicating those environments in some of our bigger waters. And because of that, we have a wild trout fishery in Missouri today. And those rivers are extremely popular. You know, we're talking about the Current, you're talking about the Merrimack, you're talking about the North Fork, you're talking about the Levin Point. North Fork of the White River is Missouri's answer to western trout fishing. It, uh, it's got probably the best rainbow trout fishery in the state, both small fish and trophy fish. If you want a western trial fishery, you like to dry fly fish, or you like to streamer fish, or you like to fish for big fish, North Fork is a place to go. And then we had Tanicomo. Tanicomo was the largest fishery in the state, particularly Shepherd the Hills Hatchery. And I believed at that time, and still do, that, uh, that the potential for a world record is actually in Tanicomo. Tanicomo is one of the great tailwaters in America. Uh, it's called Lake Tanicomo because it's sandwiched between two dams, but it looks and, and functions exactly like a 22 mile stretch of river. Uh, Spence was very instrumental in, in the creation of the trout fishery at Taney Como. You know, these fish don't just happen. There's a science behind it. There's a ton of work that goes behind, behind it. And, and Spence was really the maestro of all of that. At one time, uh, a, a fish was found floating dead in Taney Como that would have broke the world record. But it was 40 pounds plus. And, and to not think there's another one in the depths of Taney Como like that, I think would be foolish. I agree with Spence in, in his assessment that there is likely a world record brown trout living in Taney Como today. Probably the biggest job any biologist has, and most of them never realize it until they've been in for a long time, is communication. Oh, it's also worth mentioning about Spence that uh, uh, he, his ability as a communicator uh, was, was something that was very much a part of him. He ended up being, in addition to, to being a, a kind of a giant in his, in his scientific field, he was president of the Outdoor Writers Association of America, uh, which is a, a very prestigious organization. How, how rare is it that a scientist trained as a, to analyze and to question and to criticize and to investigate could become 
on the grandest stage in the world, one of the great voices for the outdoors. He's, he's that and much more. Uh, like so many people in that cohort that, uh, that came to the conservation department in the, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, um, he was a renaissance man. He, he was multi-talented. I've really not thought of it that way much. It, uh, like everything else, all of us are going to end our lifetime at some point in time, and unfortunately I'm closer than I would like to realize that. So cancer's affected me personally uh, quite a bit, and now to see uh, Spence fighting cancer and, and knowing the battle that he's going through and, and being able to reflect back on his life at this point, and knowing that he made a difference. I mean, he has left a legacy in Missouri for all of us. Current River, I'd love to do that. That may be still in the, in the bucket list. Uh, I've reached the point that I can't wait anymore. So if I go any place, I have to go somebody. It's a nice, generous boat that I can cast out of and, and uh, probably help me up the bank at the end of the end of the trip. To be able to spend a day rowing Spence down the upper current river, which I consider one of the premier pieces of water in America. I mean it's just a true brown trout fishing mecca. And and to fish that day with Spence and, and to recognize that he wasn't really out there to fish. He was out there to just see it one more time to experience that river one last time. And we didn't talk a whole lot. He just floated and, and uh, soaked it in. And you know, it was his goodbye trip to something that meant so much to him over the years. And I was just proud to show him firsthand that there's a number of us that are gonna work hard to continue his legacy, to fight to protect what he started and to make sure that the current river and the other rivers that Spence is responsible for continue to thrive as trout fisheries for as long as we're around and hopefully the generations that come after us. We have, we have a multitude of opportunities and a lot of really high quality trout fishing. We owe all of that to Spence Turner. Just an incredible life that he's lived and just an incredible job that he did bringing trout, wild trout, to Missouri. It's just a, it's a passing of not only uh, a great man, but you know, in some ways an era that, he's, that he established. I will miss him terribly. The boy, what a legacy he has left behind, and generations will have the opportunity to enjoy what, what Spence started. <laughs>